Hello chess friends and welcome to Zarov's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we see opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. But before we talk about chess, uh, if you have noticed I've changed a little bit this intros, I have ch changed a little bit this uh, thumbnails and uh, well that's not my my success. Uh, I had really help uh, and I wanted to thank you to, to this video, one of my great followers, one of one great guy and his name is Murtada Dia. He uh, created this very, very nice intro. I liked it mm, very, very much. And uh, he created also this thumbnail. I used some of these things of this thumbnail uh, to have also nice cover here. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to use all of his uh, intros, all of his um, all of these things that he creates because I have to be honest I'm not mm, that uh, creative guy when it comes to uh, creating this uh, thumbnails creating this videos I'm basically want to teach chess uh, through this uh, to, through this channel and uh, I got really really nice help today and as I said I'm gonna continue uh, with Murtada's uh, intros because they are much much better than mine and I really really appreciate his help in the, uh, for, uh, for the um, and contribution to my channel so today uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the very very important thing in chess in the middle game strategies and this is this uh, keeping the tension in the middle game so what's the tension what's the tension in the, in the middle game the tension is when we have sort of a collision between pawns uh, sort of collision between pieces when we have attacked pieces when we have uh, attacked pawns when we want um, uh, to create some pawn breakthroughs and similar ideas so when the position is dynamic we have sort of a tension and um, some of us um, uh, get get really scared when that happens and uh, you shouldn't play uh, chess scared you have to be brave while playing chess and you have to keep the tension in the middle game so most of us uh, w want to trade off pieces want to trade off pawns get the position more simplified simplification is a good thing uh, when you have an, a clear advantage but when the position uh, is complex when you only, when you don't have a clear plan you should really keep the tension in the game so here is an instructive game about the tension in the middle game uh, it was played by the legendary uh, bobby fisher against uh, eugene travis and here uh, we have and now you see we have a really, really dynamic pawn structure in the center so we have a tension and most of us uh, here after black uh, castling would play maybe even the move d5 so you see here you release the pressure in the center uh, you have now a clear uh, clear position the position is much more simplified we have now this blocked pawn structure in the center so it means we have a, a clear uh, central position so the uh, the position uh, in the center will, will well it will hardly change so that's why here after d5 here it's really really a more simplified position but not bobby fisher of course he doesn't want to play on simplifications he played simply knight on f1 keeping the tension in the center waiting uh, waiting uh, black to do something here in the center and maybe uh, get with the queen more active into the game through the square d4 so this is a really interesting idea because here after bishop on b7 you see uh, here Bobby Fischer still keep the tension in the game and here h6 was played now knight on f5 because uh, he didn't care about this central center position he um, had some nice tempos with the knight and he has a very very powerful knight outpost on on the square f5 so with this knight on f5 bobby fisher has occupied his opponent's half or other half of the board so now comes this move uh, rook on c8 and um, you see now now finally uh bob fisher plays the move d5 uh there there are two things about this move d5 now of course uh black was threatening uh some uh, discovered attacks on this bishop on c2 because the bishop was only attacked by uh defended by the queen and we have here a double attack on the c file but uh, the more important thing is but when when the rook uh, moved here to c8 uh, it uh, took away 
the square for the bishop here on c8 so this bishop would be a good challenger against this knight on f5 and now it's really really hard to challenge this knight on f5 this knight on f5 is the best piece now in bobby fisher's position so let's see now after d5 we have c3 and now Bobby Fischer, one of the best chess players, of course, in history, one of the best tacticians, plays a really, really cool move, bishop on h6, so g takes h6, now queen on c1, very powerful idea, with the preparation to take, of course, queen takes on h6, and then we have uh, checkmate threats on g7, so knight on h7, of course, queen on h6, bishop on f6, has to be played uh, here, uh, G7, uh, bishop on f6 of course covering the g7 square but now bobby fisher gets another attacker into the game rook on e3 uh, here we have queen on uh, queen on d8 and be, feel free to pause the video if you uh, can find really the best uh, the best continuation uh, it's really really again a great great uh, tactical move by by the legendary bobby so if you found this move you're a really, really great tactician because uh, in the first uh, i didn't see the move uh, um, immediately and uh, here it's the very aggressive move knight on g5 so here um, after knight takes on g5 uh, if you take of course with the bishop here on g5 you get checkmated so that's why knight on g5 but here after rook on g3 uh, black immediately resigned because in the next move we are threatening again uh, rook takes on g5 and here again a very powerful checkmate on g7 so you see these pieces are a little bit deflected and uh, let's go back it's really important uh, it was all possible because um, uh, bobby fisher really really uh, really stayed uh, very very uh, actively into the game here after knight on f1 keep the tension uh, in the center we are not uh, trading off some pawns we are not allowing uh, here a simplified position a clear position in the center here you, s you see bobby fisher managed to create a very powerful outpost and won the game effectively so well one of the best chess players maybe who kept attention in the game was Mikhail Tal. He was really something else. You see now in this game, he's really sort of a um, uh, tactician. He always likes to put pieces uh, that you can take them, but if you take them, uh, it's really, it's really dangerous. So he places the pieces on the most active squares, waits uh, his opponent uh, to get deflected all over the board with the pieces and then he strikes uh, with some aggressive aggressive tactical motives and that's why he's always fun to watch his his games were really were uh, the best chess games in history so the instructive game that i wanted to show it was played against uh, hans jaochim hecht uh, michael tal here with the white pieces and again you see uh, it was a nimzo indian defense uh, black uh, has given up uh, this um, uh, dark square bishop for the knight on c3 and uh, continued the game without uh, without the bishop pair but uh, white has some problems because we have always these problems with this double pawn and here uh, one of black's ideas can be to um, to challenge uh, to create sort of a blocking system and challenge white's uh, huge center with the move e5 so this is still common theory and of course uh, you uh, want to keep the tension in these types of position because if you take something like d takes e5 after d takes e5 the position is now much more simplified you have lost your uh, central control with the pawns and you you continuing now the game uh, with this um, with this uh, very weak c c4 and c3 pawn this bishop is really really deadly this bishop is now a little bit out of game although it creates some pins after knight from b to d7 it's not so effective so you see that's why it's really important to, to keep the tension in the game here here f3 played by Mikhail Tal of course from black's perspective it's also not good to take so black has to keep the tension in the game also because if, if you take then we have c takes d4 here and uh, now uh, you don't have any more weak pawns uh, in the next move we can try even bishop on f2 and then e4 uh, building a huge huge central control with our own pawns with this bishop pair it would be a very very cool game to, for white to continue so that's why 
here you see black and white need to keep the tension in these types of positions here queen on uh, e7 was played with some of uh, discovered attacks on the king here uh, that's why e4 was played still black and white are keeping the tension in the game knight from b to d7 and here uh, after bishop on d3 knight on f8 was played and now um, you see uh, because uh, because Mikhail Tal didn't release the pressure in the center, now he creates a very, very dangerous pawn breakthrough. Here, uh, d takes c5 was played, and now d takes uh, uh, e5. And uh, after queen takes on e5, okay, uh, the position is mo much more simplified. But uh, when we watch the pawn structure, uh, we have now a 4 on 3 situation here um, uh, on the on the king side and we have here a four and two situation but these are double pawns and here we have the bishop pair so this bishop pair is perfectly fine in this these types of positions here uh queen on a4 was played uh, c6 and now castling simply by mikhail ta and now the the game begins to start uh, begins to be really really uh too 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 complicated uh, for for um, common players because uh, Mikhail Tal plays now one of the best uh, attacking plays that I've ever seen in in my life. So here knight on g6 was played, knight on c4 with the counter attack on the queen. Here uh, queen on e6 was played, and here Mikhail Tal kept the tension in the game. He was under fire, uh, but first of all you have to you know, always consider to not retreating so when you get attacked you want to keep the uh, tension in the game because this bishop is on a very very powerful diagonal so you want to stay with this uh, bishop on this diagonal um, although it's under fire but we have to consider always a possible counter attack and here Mikhail Tal played of course the move e5 and uh, here black also found a very very interesting idea he play the move b5 so you see now many many pieces are hanging all over the board and <coughs> here Mikhail Tal again uh, kept the tension in the game so he, most of us would try something like I don't, I don't know queen on c2 retreat with the, with the queen but not Mikhail Tal that's why he was really one of the best chess players in history he took simply e takes f6 and left the queen hanging here so unbelievable stuff uh, how um, how Mikhail Tal is keeping the tension in the game here uh, b, b takes a4 was played and now we have um, f takes g6 g7 rook has to move here on g8 but now bishop on f5 rook from f to e1 uh, is not so good uh, because this leads in, uh, into a winning game for black because here we can simply take now uh, this bishop and after rook takes on e6 we have uh, uh, f takes e6 and here um white um, is continuing the game uh, with many many uh, pawns down and uh, in the next move we can also take this uh, this pawn so the position is much more simplified uh, still uh, black of course has uh, one rook uh, uh, up and uh, this is of course completely completely winning for white so that's why here after uh, bishop on f5 was played and here uh, well it's now really complicated if you take uh, here with the queen on c4 uh, then you have rook on um, e1 queen on e6 has to be played because uh, it was checkmate then you have rook takes on e6 f takes e6 but now bishop on g6 and here king on d7 has to be played now this other rook can come into the game rook on d1 uh, king on c8 but now bishop on f6 and uh, here after potential bishop on a6 we can play something like bishop on f7 and it's game over so that's why uh, here after bishop on f5 you cannot also take uh, this this bishop will be here because then you get a fork on d6 uh, and this would be a better continuation of course for uh, for um, for white because w after taking the queen uh, this uh, knight is also protecting this bishop on h4 so you see um, after bishop on f5 uh, here uh, really Mikhail Tal stayed with this uh, very important bishop here here knight takes on uh, f uh, h4 was played now finally bishop takes on e6 but now uh, if you take of course uh, f takes e6 then again you get the fork on d6 so this would be also better position for 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 white 
So that's why here um, uh, black tried the counter attack with bishop on a6, but now knight on d6 and here uh, king on e7 and now bishop on c4. Again, uh, you see uh, we are again have a very, very uh, interesting position now. Uh, many, many pieces are under attack. Here rook on g7 was played, but now first g3, we have king on d6, bishop takes on a6, knight on f5, rook from a to b1 f6 was played and now rook on d1 and i'm not going to explain now the whole game uh this is now a simplified position after mm, uh, michael tal created this very very effective um uh, tactics uh here we have a three on two situation uh, here we have a four on two situation on the queen side but these are basically only two pawns because uh, they're double pawns uh, on the c and a file and uh, here a bishop can battle against these pawns very very effectively here of course we can create a pass pawn and the activity of these rooks is much much better than uh than this black's rook so of course michael tal won the game very very easily so uh, let's see now another example how bad it can be if you release the pressure in the in the game uh, I've analyzed this game already it's a game played by Magnus Carlsen against Alexander Grischuk and you see now how dangerous it is when you release the pressure so when you're not keeping uh, the tension uh, in the game here you see Magnus Carlsen played the move bishop on e2 we have a Grunfeld uh, defense game here Grischuk played knight from b to d7 and here Magnus Carlsen simply cast so here um, you see this bishop is a little bit blocked out so we are waiting sort of the move h3 here if h3 happens um, of course if, if we play something like rook from a to d8 then if h3 happens here we can play uh, h3 uh, bishop takes on um, f3 pardon me after bishop takes on f3 now uh, you see the position is much more simplified but we have now the rook on the d file so if you keep the tension in the game so but alexander grischuk didn't uh, keep uh, the tension in the game here after castling he played immediately bishop like uh, bishop on f3 now bishop takes on f3 and now c4 uh, now magnus plays bishop on e2 and you see now uh, how important it would be if we would have here the rook on on d8 so basically uh, um, while Grishuk didn't keep uh, the, the tension in the middle game. He lost basically one tempo, which is now uh, important in the continuation of the game. Here, rook from f to d8 was played, and here f4 by Magnus Carlsen. Here, uh, knight on b6, and I want you uh, to pay good attention how important one tempo in in a chess game is, because uh, Alexander Grishuk took the knight uh, on uh, on f3 without. Uh, Magnus Carlsen playing this move h3 so I want you just to imagine that you have uh, one uh, one tempo here from Black's perspective because Grishuk lost it and uh, he would need he will need it in the continuation of the game here so Bishop on f3 of course here we have Queen on uh, a3 and now h4 Magnus Carlsen simply continues the attack e6 now uh, h5 playing a counter attack Knight on a4 here uh, h takes uh, g6 and now we have h takes g6 and now f5 breaking through with the pawns here we have uh, f takes uh, e takes f5 now e takes f5 now uh, queen on d6 and here uh, with this bishop pair now we have a supported pass pawn and Magnus Carlsen won the game also very effectively I'm not going to show you the whole game I just wanted to show you how important uh, it is to keep the tension in the game not uh, lose uh, some uh, some tempos so we'll, uh, taking some pawns taking uh, some knights without uh, any counter uh, counter attack ideas without any progressive ideas because here in the game Grishuk you see uh, lost the tempo and lost the game eventually because of this uh, one tempo so um, i hope you enjoyed this uh, enjoyed this um, video and uh, we'll continue now with this basics in chess series uh, this uh, also with this common recognition of this common pawn uh, pawn structures in the center and uh, 
also with some other opening uh, principles mid game strategies and the end game strategies meanwhile you can watch my uh, other uh, commented chess games uh, that i've created also i have the series in which i analyze some other games and you can also watch my uh, best chess games in which i show you all of the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and you can also subscribe to my channel thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course and again thank you mortada dear very very thank you for this uh, for this interest and uh, for a very very good present for me so see you soon guys